Casual sneakers are more and more replacing dress shoes and heels, and this trend has accelerated with home office. We spoke to the foot and ankle expert, Professor Christina stuckenborg kolsman about this trend and whether the number of bunion cases is decreasing. So research has shown that there is a genetic component mm -hmm. for the development of a bunion and a hallux valgus. Mm -hmm and not only the shoes are the reasons. Mm -hmm. I think if you have a risk or a tendency or a genetic disposal and then you're wearing high heels, then you have a higher risk than probably somebody else who doesn't have this genetic dis disposal there. So I think the incidence is not going down. Mm -hmm. There's another reason in my opinion also, we all getting older, society is getting older, we're all wearing these shoes. So people live longer and then they get at a later point problems with their bunion. Mm -hmm. So I see younger ones, very young ones, and then middle age, but I also see in my patient portfolio very old people who get this like with 75, 80, and then the bunion becomes symptomatic. So I don't, s don't, don't see any decrease in the number of bunions developing in our society, at least in the Western countries. The sport shoe market is very interesting. We see even companies going to the New York Stock Exchange. Do you think that, or have you personally already been contacted by sports shoe manufacturers to develop the perfect shoe? I'm not directly in like production or something with a shoemaker, mm. but of course in my daily practice I'm asked which shoe should I wear, which shoes should I for running and mm. everything. So I think there is a part which the shoe is very important. Mm but sometimes it's also marketing in my opinion so you have to really closely look at the shoe you know if it really are something you know correcting or not or only marketing features are there gender gap is another important topic to talk about women make up less than 15 percent of all orthopedic surgeons orthopedics remains the least gender diverse of all surgical specialties according to stuckenborg kolsman structures need to change the numbers of female medical students are rising. For example, in Hanover, we have 68% of our medical schools in one class are female. But somehow they are not getting into the surgery subjects. It's not only orthopedic surgery, it's also abdominal cardiac surgery. So, of course, the surgery has to change or more make themselves more attractive and we have to see what the younger female medical students would like to do. So there is a gap. I think so, and um, just as a, as, as, a, as a department for foot and ankle, you have to be attractive also to attract female surgeons. And of course, when you are the chief of a foot and ankle department, you are a mentor for all the other younger mm -hmm. ones, female or male, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And I think so, it, it could be a role model, you know, if females come into leading positions, of course they attract other females too.